Ben Dominich, contributing editor to The Spectator, Fox News contributor. Hello, Ben. How are you? I'm good this morning, Hugh. How are you? Good. You know, Ben, I've, I've already declared that should Leader McConnell retire at the end of this term or thereafter, I'm supporting Dr. John Thornton for his replacement. Do you have a Do you have a, a favorite in that re, three Johns race? John Barrasso, John Thune, and John Cornyn? Well, it's uh, so I just have to de- declare my my priors, which is that I was uh, John Cornyn's chief speechwriter for two and a half years. Uh, think very highly of him, uh, and certainly think that he would be a good leader. I think in terms of uh, handicapping the race, I think a lot of people uh, think that John Thune would be in the lead, in part because you know he's almost a decade younger than the other two, and I think that uh, people kind of want to have a, gener- a real generational shift. Uh, but I think that, you know, look, it's it's a very close thing at the moment. And a lot of this has been going on behind the scenes, uh, conversations that they've all been having. Uh, and, uh, you know, in terms of the, the uh, challenge that Republicans have going into the election next year, uh, the McConnell team uh, is very aware of uh, the fact that his presence as leader uh, does uh, hamper their ability to make this about the age and senility uh, of the president of the United States. And that's something that I think that you know, a lot of Republicans are mindful of. They're also concerned, frankly, uh, just about Mitch generally. It's one of these situations where you know, these things happen as you get older. But if Mitch McConnell was not the leader, if he was just the senator, you, know, you, you really wouldn't see the kind of attention paid to it that you have in the natural spotlight that comes with that. You know, uh, Jim Risch is a, is a senator. If he uh, ran into me, the, uh, you know, tomorrow on the corner, I would have no idea who he was. Couldn't, couldn't pick him out of the lineup. You know, but it's one of these situations where when you're the leader of the Republican Party, uh, either the majority or the minority, uh, you attract that attention on a daily basis. And that's why it matters more when you have these moments uh, that I think we've seen. You know, if, if you know anybody who's achieved that level of age, uh, you know, it's not infrequent that, that that sort of thing happens. And clearly McConnell is, you know, with it most of the time, which is not something that you could say, you know, about Dianne Feinstein or, you know, m- maybe other members of the body historically. So we'll see what what happens here. But I do think that there is a possibility uh, that he steps down from leadership but does not actually retire from the Senate itself, that he sticks yeah, around in that. I'll be surprised if that happens. Last time I saw the leader was in December in person, and he was like 100 percent Mitch McConnell and talking inside baseball on Senate races. Then he fell down the stairs, and I read yesterday that the doctor said he had a concussion. This is very common for people coming out of a concussion protocol. In the NFL, it's like two weeks. In the Senate, it's like two years to come out of the concussion protocol. Uh, Nobody notices that you've gone in. But I understand it's a rather routine thing. I I just can't believe in the middle of a session that they would have a transition. It would be a nightmare because he got, like, the best staff in Washington. Well, I think that it would be a, a real challenge for them to deal with, but I also think that this is something where they don't want to have, you know, th- we've had these kind of viral moments, but, you know, it, it could have been a lot worse, let's put it that way. And I think yeah, Ben, let me ask you about age. You, you knew Senator McCain very well, and, and I uh, have known a lot of people very well who have gotten older. I don't believe Joe Biden can win this election against anyone. I think viscerally independents who do not care about the chatter and tune in, think he's an old man who cannot do this job. Do you think he's going to be their nominee? You know, I, I'm, I've been kind of a holdout. Uh, you know, you and Stuart Varney have asked me this question occasionally, and, and I still am, am of the mind that he's going to be the nominee. And the reason, I think, is that if you look at the, if you look at the general election polling, as, as they do, uh, they see this as a situation where before they've taken, you know, one ad buy against the former president, Donald Trump, it's a coin flip situation. And they feel like they can pound uh, the crap out of the former president and, uh, and, and also do so, of course, with the help of, the, of a compliant media uh, and a landscape that they feel like is going to improve economically over the next year. They, they're a lot more optimistic than some of us. But it's one of these situations where I think getting him out of that position forces you to pick someone else. And, you know, ideas don't run for president. People do. And that's one of the problems that, you know, they, they're faced with, the people that they have. Uh, in order to supplant him, are not more popular than he is in key portions of the country. And I think that that's something that, you know, as much as he is infirm, as much as he is aged, I think that they want to roll that old horse out on the, on the track again because he's the only one that they've had who's proven. Yeah, as a man. personal matter, yesterday my, my wife went and visited an old friend of ours who has, I saw him 10 weeks ago, he precipitously declined in 10 weeks. Precipitously. Yeah. 
And at that age, it can happen, and it could happen it, in the middle happens, of the campaign. Slowly, slowly, and then all at once. And I think all that's, that's exactly, exactly, and that's what I think we're seeing. Let me go to uh, Idalia because Idalia, uh, the, the the red, the Salvation Army, and the link to Team Rubicon are still over at HughHewitt.com because it's a mess. It's a nightmare, uh, Ben. How do you think that impacted Ron DeSantis's race, if at all? Because he was once again competent, efficient, to the point. Well, I think that he got some very positive press coverage, uh, you know, out of it because it's showing him in his element, which is actually handling the challenges of the day. And I think that that's one of the reasons why you saw uh, the former president not stop attacking him during that portion, even though it seems gauche. It's one of these things where I think he wanted to kind of stomp on what was anticipated to be a very positive moment that shows the kind of capability that Ron DeSantis would bring uh, if he was uh, elevated to the presidency. But I'm, I'm not, I don't know how much he's going to be able to build off of that because it doesn't seem like, you know, the American people care that much about that kind of thing uh, on a national scale the way that they used to. I, I, I'll be curious to see if he's able to do that. I think in a place like Iowa, it might matter more. Uh, and that's something that we can certainly, you know, wait and see what the polls are going to look like. But a- you know, Apropos of nothing, Ben, uh, the last time I watched, watched, Washington Week in Review is probably 15 years ago. Uh, do you watch it? <laughs> no, no, I do not. I okay, do not. so Jeffrey Goldberg is now moderating it. So they basically sold that sponsorship. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I understand. Okay. <laughs> and, and so now it's, it's down to 835,000 people watching what was the preeminent news and yeah. public affairs show of, of my youth. Why? Do people not watch it anymore? And I don't believe it's cable and special report, although I, you know, a lot of people do watch special report for the roundtable for that reason. It's got some representation of everybody. But why do you think it's so precipitously declined? <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure that I'm uh, prepared to offer a, a, an opinion on this. You, I'm the worst person in the world when it comes to evaluating the performance of, of the business that we are in in terms of political commentary because I consume so little of it on TV. I have a TV in my office. We moved into this house two years ago. It's still not hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I have to admit I watch everything in terms of, of uh, you know, online and that kind of thing and, and, and the clips. One thing I will say, though, is, you know, look, I think that one of the reasons – uh, that we appreciate, uh, you know, political commentary where we have representation like that is because it's so rare in this day and age. The worst thing that John Stewart ever did was to kill the original Crossfire because if, yes. even if you didn't, even if you didn't like the yelling, you actually got a representation of two different sides uh, of different opinions on the news of the day. And I think that people deserve more and more of that. But instead, what are we getting? We're getting Jen Psaki talking to her old boss. About you know how about how Democrats are great and Republicans suck, and it's yeah. one of these things that I think is just uh, you know, people are tired of it. They want to actually see a debate, uh, and that's why I hope that we can actually get back eventually to having more debate, having more town halls. I want to, I mean, even even within the the party, I mean, we we deserve to be having a Republican debate right now about Ukraine. You know, uh, that is on the level of what we saw about the Panama Panama Canal back in the day, where we have actual major figures on, of opinion and of of, of political depth. You know, going back and forth about you know, how ben, we're going to find a way out of this. Cable news has become a sort of televised gymnasium where other people exercise the opinions you already hold so that yep. you're better at displaying them when your turn comes at the dinner table. It, it really exactly. is. It, it there does. isn't it, much like the panel on special report. And I think yeah. that's a disaster. I, I had a great conversation with the Democrat this week, Ro Khanna, on air. And I'm sure he took a lot of incoming. Yeah, no, he, I know. I, 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 I read the transcript afterwards, yes. And, and you see, what I compliment Roe for is that he's committed to the de-escalation of political warfare, as am I. Uh, and de-escalation actually requires places where you meet and confer with the other side, right? Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that is unfortunate is we've gotten to a point where, as you said, you know, people want to sort of – they want to wear the person's jersey at the table. Uh, yes. You know, and uh, and that's not actually healthy. What's what's you know, it, that's the kind of thing that leads to people screaming at each other in restaurants. You know, instead, I think what we actually have to have is uh, the kind of reason debate where people come out of it with a, a, perhaps a different set of knowledge uh, that they had bef- before they went in. And that's something that I think is, you know, is very beneficial to the country. Finding the space for that to happen, though, is is very, very difficult in a stage at which, you know, all of these different corporate sponsors that are, you know, the backing entities, including shows, uh, they don't really want to feature the kind of, of yeah, things. Think, that think they on this, Ben. Be featured for that. 
Young people like me, geeks, used to watch Washington Week in Review, and that's how we learned to talk about politics. Right? I, I, so I, back I learned the, it from the McLaughlin group. So. Yeah, and that was that was fine too, because they had Bolton and, and you know, Bolton <laughs> held his own and they had two out of five were lefties. Uh, ben Dominich, the old days, they're not coming back, but maybe they will at the new CNN. We'll find out. Ben Dominich, thank you, my friend. See you on Fox soon.